When I play with my dog or my cat, I've noticed something that I decided I should investigate further. Are my pets right pawed? Before we actually get into the question of whether my cat and dog are right or left pod, we need to understand what handedness is, what causes it, and how it might manifest in different animals. The scientific term for handedness is laterality or lateralization, which is the showing of a preference for one side of the body over the other in animals with bilateral symmetry like us. For instance, I use my right hand for writing and most other motions, but marching band trained me to start walking on my left foot. There are a lot of scientific scientific studies that have tried to explore the connections between the jobs done by the right and left hemispheres of the brain and which hand we each prefer to use. However, as with most questions about the brain, this is an incredibly complex issue with no clear answer. Laterality or handedness could be genetic, behavioral, or probably some of both. So do animals other than humans have handedness? Again, a complicated question, but I dug into the scientific literature to see if I could discover a consensus. Of course, the answer turns out to be maybe? Researchers studying wallabies in Australia found that most tended to be left pod, even from a very early age. These scientists present the idea that animals like humans and wallabies that spend most of their time on their hind legs have freed up their front limbs for other tasks, and so are more likely to show a preference for one hand over the other. But my pets are quadrupeds, or animals that spend most of their time on all four legs. Additionally, both dogs and cats are classified as carnivores, so I wanted to find as many scientific studies as possible that were more directly applicable to these types of animals. Something really interesting that I wasn't expecting to find was a study on handedness in wild black bears, another quadrupedal carnivore. The scientists in this study filmed black bears at the edge of a river hunting for salmon leaping upstream. While most of the bears showed no preference for their lunging paw, the scientists did notice that spirit bears, or the white morph of the species, seemed to prefer using their left paw. Even though the majority of the hunting bears didn't seem to show a paw preference during the initial catch of the salmon, they did seem to prefer using their right paws to bring the salmon up to their mouths. However, it's important to note that all of the conclusions of this study suffer from a very low sample size. Luckily for me, since dogs and cats are so common in our society, a lot of experiments have been done to try to answer the question of handedness in our favorite pets. As always, there's a list with links to sources down in the description. Though many research groups have tried to test handedness in cats, results have been mixed. This could be due to a wide variety of factors, including the age, sex, breed, and history of each individual cat included in a test. Scientists have also noted that handedness in cats tends to be more prominent when the cats are trying to get food than when they're playing with toys. I found a really interesting experiment where the researchers put wet food in a glass tube and then watched to see which paw the cats used to retrieve the food from the tube. The study showed that kittens tend to be ambidextrous, while adult cats tend to show a distinct paw preference. Interestingly, the study also showed that male cats tend to prefer using their left paw, while females tend to prefer using their right paw. Let's see if this experiment will work on my cat. I know, I know, a sample size of one isn't good science, but I want to see if I can use this experiment to statistically confirm my hunch based on anecdotal observations. Puzzle is an adult female cat, so according to the results of the study I just mentioned, I should expect her to show a strong preference for using her right paw. That's also what I expect given my own personal observations. Let's put it to the test.
replicate the study methods, I did the test with Puzzle 50 times, but with the trials broken up into smaller sets to avoid habituation or training. It looks like Puzzle used her left paw 7 out of 50 times and her right paw 43 out of 50 times. While those numbers may look different, how do we tell if they're actually different? We can use a simple statistical test called the chi-square test to determine if my cat is actually right pawed or not. You can click this link over to a great video by Bozeman Science that explains more thoroughly how the chi-square test works. Okay, so in order to do the calculations for the experiment that we did with Puzzle, the first thing that we need to do is write out all of our data. Uh, so first, we'll write out the total number of touch trials, which was 50. And our null hypothesis here is that she's ambidextrous, or that there's no difference between her use of her left paw and her right paw. So that would mean that she did 50% of the touches with her left paw, and so our expected would be 50% of 50 touches would be 25 touches for her left paw, and then the same thing for her right paw. So that's 25 each for both the left and for the right. But now we can put in our observed values, or what actually happened in the experiment. Uh, so we observed that Puzzle used her left paw seven times and her right paw 43 times. Okay, so now that we've written down all of our data, we can figure out if there's actually a difference between these numbers using the chi-square calculation or the chi-square equation. So the formula for that is sigma, or the sum of the observed minus the expected squared over the expected. So we'll do that formula twice because we did two trials for the experiment, one each for the left paw and for the right paw. So we'll fill out that formula twice and sum them together to get our actual chi-square value. Our degrees of freedom for this calculation will be 1 because we did two trials, and our critical value will be 3.841. So if our chi-squared value is more than that critical value, then we'll know that there's a difference between our two trials. Now that we've done the calculation, we can see that our chi-squared value is 25.92, which is greater than our critical value of 3.841. So that means that we're rejecting our null hypothesis that puzzle was ambidextrous, so there was a difference between the counts for each of the trials. Now that we know there's a difference, we can look back up at what we recorded on our original data and see that her right paw usage was far higher than her left paw usage. So the chi-square test would tell us that puzzle does seem to be right pod. Okay, so we've determined that my cat is right pod, but what about my dog? I found a similar food focus test for dogs, but this one uses a Kong toy. At least one research paper noted that this test seems to work better for larger breed dogs, but that shouldn't be a problem because Doe is pretty big. I'll give her the toy and she'll have one hour to touch it at least 50 times with one of her paws while she eats. Similarly to cats, adult female dogs seem to prefer using their right paws. Before we try the test, I know what you're going to say. Couldn't my dog's handedness be influenced by her training? That's absolutely a factor we should consider during the test. My husband and I are both right-handed, so when we ask Doa for behaviors like paw or high five, we usually get her left paw. But I said I still think that she's right pawed, so which is it?
Well, you can flip it back over. Why are you looking at me? You can flip it back over and keep eating out of it. The first thing we need to notice is that Doa didn't really like the Kong, so I used another similar toy. Even then, she wasn't really into holding the toy with her paws. It looks like Doa used her left paw 22 out of 37 touches during this experiment, and her right paw 15 out of 37 touches. While this isn't the 50 touches required by the original study methods, let's still use the chi-square test to see if there's a significant difference here. So again, we can start by writing out all of our data. So the total number of touches in this experiment was only 37, not the requisite 50, but even still, we should be able to do our calculations. So the null hypothesis is still that she would be ambidextrous, so that would be half of 37 or 50% of 37 for each of the PAW trials. So that means that we can record our expected values, and it's okay if the expected values aren't whole numbers because they're just estimations. So the expected is 18.5 touches for the left paw and also for the right paw 18.5 touches. But our observed values were that she uh, touched with her left 22 times and with her right 15 times. So using these new data, we can perform the same chi-square test again to see if Doa was ambidextrous or if she showed a paw preference. So here we wind up with a chi-square value of only 1.324, which is much less than our critical value of 3.841. However, I'm not completely convinced that we should support this null hypothesis that Doe is ambidextrous because we didn't get the 50 touches. My husband suggested I try a slightly different method with our dog, more similar to the one used on cats. I put a treat under our couch just out of reach of her mouth, and then Doa had to reach under the couch with one of her paws to drag the food closer. <laughs> Let's try the chi-square test one more time with the information from this new experiment. Okay, so again, the first thing we do is write out the data for this new experiment. So the total number of touches, this time we got to that 50 number and actually exceeded it. So we had 53 total foot touches. So half of 53 would mean our expected values for our null hypothesis. Again, it's okay if they're not whole numbers because they're just estimates. So they would be 26.5 touches with the left foot and also with the right foot, 26.5 touches but our observed values with Doa's feet under the couch were uh, that she used her left foot uh, six times and her right foot 47 times. So again, let's use the chi-square test to determine the difference. So I'm very happy that this time we actually beat the number 50 that the experiment required and that means we have a large enough sample size to be able to do all of these calculations more reliably. That gives us a chi-square value of 31.717, which is much, much larger than our critical value of 3.841. So that means that we can reject the null hypothesis and demonstrate that Doa is right pod, not ambidextrous this time. This just goes to show the value of 
doing tests multiple times for replication and having a large enough sample size so that you can actually determine if there is a difference. Okay, so it looks like the results of the experiments we performed do confirm my hunch that both of my pets are right pod. But can you think of any biases in the experiment or any ways that we could refine or improve the methods to get a better test? We have to remember that these results are just for my two individual animals, while the papers in the description used a much larger sample size to try to determine broader trends within species. Have you ever wondered if your pets are left or right pod? Try some of these experiments and leave your results down in the comments. I'd love to see if our results wind up mirroring the results found in the papers I mentioned. If you liked this video, don't forget to like it! If you didn't like this video, please share it with someone who would. And if you'd like to support The Roving Naturalist, remember to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification icon. You can also follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. I'm a periodic contributor on the radio show Blue Dot, so you should go check that out as well. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.